Oh my god! <laughs> it, <laughs> it, have a listen. Let's 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 have a let's talk about this on the podcast, right? I want to get because uh, Josiah's also been playing it. Listen to the goddamn recording. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get Josiah on. I know. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he also agrees with a lot. Listen of to the recording. <laughs> Hey, welcome to episode 166 of Front Seat Gamer. I'm Nick. I'm here with Paul. Hey. And Blake. Hey, Nick. How's it going, guys? Pretty good. good. Pretty tired. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. How about you? Uh, you know, pretty good. But I think we're all pretty good. So, Blake, you pretty good? I am pretty good. That's a good time to be good. Uh, pretty good. It's a pretty good time to be yeah. pretty good. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, any games come out this week? I can't think of a single okay. one. Okay, well... Short episode, Nothing then. that anyone on this podcast is interested in. <laughs> Cheers to the kingdom, baby! <laughs> I've been playing it. Blake, you've been playing I'm it. I'm playing it. Paul? I have watched a little bit of Stacy play it. <laughs> Stacy <laughs> is Paul's partner. Yep. Uh, great. So, uh, Paul, you've been playing something else, though. Yes. Blake? And Blake has also been playing oh, yeah, yeah. X4. Yes. We'll talk a Foundation. little bit about this because let's let's face it, we're gonna take I feel like I, I feel like Zelda is gonna take up the whole podcast yeah. and I reckon yeah, 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 X4 yeah, yeah, yeah. could also take up the whole podcast. So yeah. we could just delay that. De- until... Delay oh, we'll delay that. We'll delay X4. Yeah. But okay. but like yeah. yeah, we we've both been playing this X4 game. Uh and we've both been running up against its uh it it's a game that's like, usability issues. It's usability issues. It's I'm really, really into it. Yeah. But my god, it was like an uphill battle. Yeah. Like the game was actively trying to get you to not play it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Every time you touch the mouse, it shocks you a little bit. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's, let's talk Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. Okay. Blake, yeah. you told me just before the podcast mm-hmm. that you've just gotten to uh, Hyrule. Hyrule. Yep. Like the castle or. No, the field in front of the castle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I ran around the field a bit. I went yeah. to a, I went to a stable and then, okay. and then. Did yeah, you go to the town? Much. No. Okay. No, right. no. I'm heading. I'm heading towards a blip on the map. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. I, I know which blip that which, is. Because because I'm playing in uh, pro um, UI. Oh, you've got all the stuff. So turned I've got off. all That's that so stuff good turned off with all that stuff um, turned off. So I didn't know there was a blip to follow. Yeah. For, and uh, for like yeah, quite yeah. a while. So I was just like, oh, there's a um, there's a there's a stable over there. I'm gonna just head over there, and then later on, I looked at the map and said, "Oh, there's a blip. I yep. need to I need to get." To. <laughs> um, was that stable the one with the big drawing on the ground? I don't think so. Okay. No. Um, you might need to go back to that stable. This Maybe. this sure is a lot of cool stuff in that game. I gotta say. So when you're, you, okay, so you start off uh-huh. on a giant island. Yeah. When you in the event, sky Let's, in the in the in the yeah. sky in the sky uh-huh. when you eventually. When you eventually jump off yeah. and you're flying, you're f- falling yeah. really down, uh-huh. you have like a good, I don't know, minute to just really look around. Yes. And the landscape has changed quite a bit. Yeah. There's a lot of, I, I think the big drawing that you're talking about, uh-huh. I did see from the sky. Sure. Um, and there's just, it's it's like that same, it's like that same feeling in Breath of the Wild when you first see the massive vista. Yeah. Except it's like it's way, way more. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like that, but it's, times a hundred. The, the vista. I mean, look, big portions of the of the world of Hyrule are basically the same. It's yeah. Like, there's like rubble around. There's new ingredients. There's new yeah, monsters. yeah. Like I could, I could find the things. I was like, okay, yeah. where's a point? A point that's obvious is the volcano. So I was yeah. like, there's the volcano, there's the castle. And I was like, where's the plateau? Yeah. I looked through my binoculars. I was like, okay, there's the plateau. I know where, you know, things are. Sure. But there's also a load of other yeah. random weird things. Uh-huh. And I'm like, what is that? And what is that? And what yeah. is that? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I've, I've, I've gone a little bit further than you. Mm-hmm. I'll tr- we'll try to avoid specific story spoilers. Yeah. I'm going to talk about, Probably mechanics and locations and features. Okay. So, listener, if you haven't played any Zelda and you don't want to hear any of that, um, keep listening. This because I want to ruin someone's day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the world is huge. I mean, it, it's it's the Breath of the Wild size, mm. um, but there are it's it's much larger than that. 
first of all, there's the sky stuff. Yeah, which has yeah, its which, own map. Yes, it's got yeah. its own map. I've only really just been to uh, the starting island, but I've seen stuff on the horizon and, mm. and you know, you can see stuff in the distance. So I know there's lots of stuff. Yeah. Um, there's also an underground. No way. <laughs> and the underground is also Oh my huge. God. The <laughs> underground is, I don't know what size it is relative to the Breath of the Wild, yeah. like basic world, but it's, it's at least a few, like, sections holy like a, few, a few like areas yeah you know? that's amazing um and it's real weird and scary mm. uh and here's the other thing even the breath of the wild world is larger than it appears because uh they've added caves oh yeah <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. caves everywhere <laughs> yeah Mm-hmm. And wells. And I, have you been in a no, well? No, I haven't been to a well. But I like that when you go into a cave, this little thing comes up saying discovery. Yeah. Like, and you, it, may, it it's a little, it's like, little reward uh-huh. feeling of like, oh, I've found something secret, <laughs> you know, even though it's like, uh, some of them are just like clearly in the path yeah. that you're walking yeah. on. And like, but still, it makes you feel like, oh, I've discovered something. This is, this I is, I found the cave. I found a cave. It's mine. What's in it? Yeah. <laughs> so they have, they do that. I think they do that for a mechanical reason as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, in any of the caves you've been in, have you found any giant glowing blue frogs? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, apparently, every cave has one. Oh. But only one. Oh, have you, Did you do anything to that frog? Killed it. Uh-huh. And what happened? And it dropped like a... Like a gem of some sort, Bubble right? of some kind. Yeah. yeah. It was like a bubble gem or yeah, something Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh, I still don't know what those are for. Yeah. I've got like maybe eight of them now. Okay. Like yeah, but I've got a few as well. But every cave has one. Yeah. So I think the reason they mark, they, they say you've discovered this cave uh, is so that you can like have yep. a checklist of all of the caves. I you see. Wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, There's also something in those caves that I think maybe also be in all those caves is the little, um the little rabbit guys and do you know those yeah the, the the treasure goblins essentially i do know what you're talking about except those are the frogs oh wait they are the frogs. when you i don't know if you noticed it but when you when you quote unquote kill one of those giant blue yeah. glowing frogs yeah they turn into the rabbit guy and then disappear oh, i never noticed yeah those guys are <laughs> i've seen i saw one Loopies, before i the saw way. the frog i saw one like run into a cave before i saw a frog and I, d- I did see one after i killed a frog but right. I didn't link the two together. Right. I th- I think the reason you see, I think I remember seeing one run into a cave as well, and I think that it's meant to be a signal. It's right. Like, I see. There's one of these guys in here. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I'll, why don't we talk about the starting island? Yep. Uh, four little shrines. You get all your powers. Very much like the start. of yep. Breath of the Wild. Very much like the start, the Great Plateau in Breath of the Wild. Yep. Uh, what did you what what powers? Let's talk about the powers. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. Ultra Hand. Oh, yeah. Uh, it is a little bit fiddly to use. Uh, I did have to Google how to do some stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, because um, maybe I, like, brushed through where it tells you to do stuff. Uh. Um, <laughs> like, there is a point in games for me when if too many you controller tutorials pop up, uh-huh. I'm just, just like, skip skipping it. it. Skip yeah. it, skip it. Okay. Well, they, they have a lot of the prompts on screen all the time anyway. Like, when you're in God Hand... You know, I still had, I still, like, I still had to Google how to like rotate. Hold on, R. Uh, yeah, I still, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still had to Google how to do that. It's on the screen. <laughs> I literally did. <laughs> That's oh, fine. oh, wait. I am playing in that. Oh, that pro. Yeah, good point. That pro Maybe they've turned UI off mode, the, so, yeah. yeah, it's possible. Uh, yeah. So it's a bit fiddly to use. Mm. You can pick up pretty much any object that is just sort of a free floating, free moving object in the world. Yeah, you can move it. You can rotate it. You can glue it to other stuff. Yep. Uh, there must be some hard limit to the number of things you can glue together, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> it uh, I seems, guess there must be, but I've never, high. I've never tried. Um, <laughs> but it's very cool. You really feel that, um, that feeling of like, this is how I'm so. Here's a problem yeah. to solve, and they give you all this stuff, and you just have to figure out how to do it. There's no right or wrong way. Yep. You just do it your way. Yep. You know. Um. Did you enjoy using that power? Yes. What, I, what did I, you make? I um, well in the in the uh, in the island you make a lot of um, uh, boats. Mostly. A lot of boats. <laughs> you, you you make a few boats. 
which is yeah. fun. That's fine. Yeah. Easy thing. But then when you get to the, there's like minecart tracks that go uh-huh. from island to island. And uh, some of them have just minecarts lying around. And that's easy. You just put yeah. them on there on and there. you glue a fan on the back and away you go. Uh-huh. Uh, there was one that like, I, fir- I did that and the track was broken and I fell off and died. So <laughs> what you have to do is like, there's a bunch of like large metal hooks lying around. And yeah. There have been places where you've used these hooks yeah. in the past to like create, you glue them to a platform. Basically make a hang. Yeah, yeah. And then you just whatever. like, yeah, like, like, flying yeah, fox. flying fox yeah. down yeah. the thing. So, yeah, I constructed a, a contraption of that was like a minecart with a hook and a fan and then hooked it uh-huh. to the, the rail that wasn't broken. And then, you know, away I go. <laughs> it was very, very cool. And then, um, you find, uh, oh, I, I tried making a, um, a hoverboard. Uh, uh, did you try putting two fans underneath a piece of wood? Yes. Did it work? <laughs> uh, it works for sure, but like, my God, it's just out of control. <laughs> oh, yeah, because it would it would change direction based on your weight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I stood yeah. in the middle, and it's like hovers for a bit, and then it just like just flies and spins all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's very, very cool. And then... I, um, I didn't even try, think of that. That's really great. Uh, I, you, you get these... Uh, towards the end of the island, you get these gliders. Yes. Um... And that is actually like they did this thing that um I didn't even think, but like uh while you well, when you launch them, uh, if you stand in the middle, they just uh, of the glider. There's like a like a circular spot that you stand in, mm-hmm. and it'll just kind of glide. It'll, it'll just glide, sort of dip and, oh, yeah, along. Yeah. But if you step to the side, it'll start to turn. Yeah. And that's how you steer it. Mm-hmm. And like that that realization was incredible to me. <laughs> Because the, because the thing is, I was standing, when, when we first launched, I was not standing in the yeah. exact center, and it was just turning. And I'm uh, like, oh, my God, what do you do here? Like, this is, I mean, this is a cool <laughs> thing, but, like, it's just out of control. Is oh, this it, is broken. And I'm like, is it guiding yeah. itself? I don't know. What, and, uh-huh. and then I moved again and was like, wait a minute, and then uh-huh. realized it could, I could control it. And I was like, this is, like, the coolest thing. Yeah. It was so, so good. Yeah. And uh, and you can augment that with with fans. Yeah, yeah. I put a fan on there, so yeah. you know you keep it going. And I also tried um, getting more extreme with putting fans on the bottom uh-huh. and all this stuff, but it was it was too unstable. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I feel like that would be the case. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can get uh, there's a part I have I've seen but I haven't used yet, mm-hmm. uh, which is like a control stick. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. I I did see it in the the trailer yeah. or, or something that you um. Showed us. Yeah, I think it basically lets you then control it more directly. Yeah. But, like, the fact that you can just use your weight distribution yeah. is really cool. That's so cool. Um, One bummer, though. Uh-huh. Uh, when I first left the island, I launched myself off from one of those gliders. Uh-huh. They have a limited use, and they just oh. eventually disappear. Oh, really? Yeah. They're like, they start... Oh. Like, I got pretty far, and then it just starts flashing. Oh, okay. And and I was like, what the hell? And it's flashing faster and faster, and then just, boom, disappears. Interesting. And okay. then I just uh, fell. Dang. Yeah. That's a bit of a shame. Yeah. Uh, but I, I wonder if it's like... Probably, I want, uh, probably like, for good reason. Yeah, I guess. It, like, they, I think they, especially at the start, they want a slightly curated experience. Yeah. Where you land and you're near, like, the, the center of Hyrule, which is where you are, mm. has... Uh, a lot of little shrines that will teach you basic mechanics like yeah. combat, blocking, um, using your shield, throwing weapons, that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. And they're all kind of located near either like early towns or just like that early area. Yeah. Uh, and I suspect they don't want players to just build a plane and then fly into a volcano. Yeah, I get it. Because you, you could literally fly to the other end of the map, I think, if you just... Yeah. Kept going. Yeah. Um, do you reckon it was a distance away that it failed at? Or do you reckon it was or, like, a time? like a time? Yeah. I don't know. It, it felt more like a time, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it was still a, a decent time, but yeah, it it was a surprise. Yeah. Then I had to like angle myself towards another floating island and like land on it. Oh, yeah. did you did you manage to do it? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's just, but then, it's then I had to jump off that island. <laughs> If it's time based, then technically you might be able to just jam more fans on, or rockets, <laughs> mm. which I haven't got yet. Yeah, I, I, I have a feeling they slowly meter out some mm-hmm. of the more complex items. Yep, yep. I've got some interesting ones for sure. Okay. Uh, do you want to hear about yeah, some of yeah. the ones I've found? Yeah. So you, you know, there's like a flame emitter. Yep. 
Um, I found a beam emitter. Oh. Which just basically shoots a laser. Oh, my God. And it uh, <laughs> it was attached to a, a weapon. Uh -huh. uh, it basically had a like a laser sword. <laughs> uh, That's so cool. Sick. I found uh, there's like a spring. Oh. And the spring is really interesting. I put a spring on a shield. Yeah. And now when I block, things get thrown away. Oh, wow. Like they get repelled. <laughs> Um, but you, I could also put it on a sword and make them like yeah, yeah, yeah. get knocked back. Yeah. Um, I found uh, there's like a, a lightning unicorn head thing mm. that I put on a shield. Mm -hmm. And now when I have my shield out, I just walk towards a guy. It gets electrocuted. Oh, that's cool. Which is really good. Yeah. It's really strong. I, <laughs> I really got into um, the, the, the flame emitter on a shield. Um, yeah. Because... Well, if you put it on a weapon, I mean that's cool, but like it flails around, like it's it's yes. Uh, but on a, a shield, on it's a, shield, a very you have directed dirt control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just walk up to guys and go boom, and then they're on fire <laughs> and they die, and you're yeah. like, this is this is great. I so just have a flamethrower now. At this point, we're talking about the second power, which is called fusion. Or yes, fusion, right. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, the other one I found, which I haven't quite used yet, but I've got three of them. Mm. Is cannons. Cannons. Yeah. What does that do? I assume it launches a projectile oh you haven't oh you haven't found it yet yeah i, I right. have found it i haven't used it yet oh um it's it's in the it's a capsule form oh right yeah yeah yeah. yeah. okay so yeah uh paul if you don't know you can there's all these little devices and mm. you can find them all over the world just like lying around and you can slap them on your weapons just through fusion um but yeah, you could also you could also carry them in your inventory if you get them from like specific devices mm. or uh, or chests so yeah. the device you get it from I find incredibly satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just like a, a gotcha. It is uh, machine. But it's when a capsule, when you put them in thing. and the the little the little yeah. marbles roll out, you're yeah. like, this is so satisfying. Yeah. To me. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's uh, really a clever way to make it feel <laughs> fun. Yeah, like it, it's is all the really output actually random. Um, I, I assume there's weighted randomness, and I, I, it, I, I, I assume I, there's restrictions. I think it is. Get, I was like but, trying yeah. to figure out if there was like recipes, you know, like you combine two different right things. But I, I don't think I there think it's is a quantity more than it is a recipe. Yeah, yeah. It's like the more stuff you get in, you get like way more stuff out. What do yeah. you put in? Uh, you put in uh, what are they like the, the zone charges? I charges. Or, yeah, like the the power sources you get from the constructs. Yeah. Okay. Um, those can be consumed to restore your battery, or they can be like, I guess combined to make other like uh, regions that will mm. later later let you improve your battery capacity and stuff yeah or you can just use them as basically currency to get more devices yep yeah i mean i just sat there just unloading them into this yep. machine and just <laughs> getting so many had like 30 something fans yeah at, at the end and it's like man this is great so i uh there's so there's a lot of experimentation i want to try so for example i found a place where there was just a few springs lying around oh. and i already had one that fused to my shield because yeah. i found the shield with it fused to it right but um uh i the way the springs work is like they, they lock in place mm. and then when you, you can step on them and then you hit them with your sword and they just like trigger and they shoot you up oh wow if you attach two of them together they will double the height that you get shot up. Uh, right. And I've only found two, <laughs> but I am keen to stack them up and see yep. like what happens. Yep. Um, it's the 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 physics in that game are so solid. Like it, it, yeah, it's it's pretty amazing the way everything everything plays off everything else. And but the thing is that if it it all works in a way that both a you would expect and, and not like in a wacky mm. like glitchy way mm -hmm. and be in like a really stable way yeah so yeah. like uh you know like you know oblivion and, and and skyrim whatever they all have all these games of physics you can move things around oh, you, can, yeah. you can drag bodies around or whatever <laughs> but like if a door closes on body yeah everything freaks out yeah yeah, yeah. you know uh, yeah, the, this game is seems very very solid with the physics. You're right. I've not encountered any physics bugs for a game that's so reliant, reliant on, the on it. Yeah. yeah, like everything, like even like I was saying, the hoverboard, like going out of control. Uh -huh. I'm like, yeah, of course it did. Of course it went out of control. <laughs> what was I thinking? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It felt to me there was a point when I was like trying to build this thing. It felt 
a little bit like Kerbal Space Program. Yes. In a way <laughs> of like the physics is so on point that like you really have to be like, okay, if this fan is slightly too much in this direction, yeah, it's going to spin in a, in a way you don't want. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a, a shrine I found which involved like basically giant balls. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and, and essentially there's a giant container of balls. Yeah. Uh, and in any other game, I feel like if I tried to walk through the giant container of balls, they would all be shifting around. Oh, yeah. I would get like if if like I tried to climb up them or whatever, my character's animations would get all weird yeah, or yeah. you know there there would just be it's weirdness. Like, it's happening. like mm. doing something like that. You're just asking for physics trouble. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You, you, I would just expect to like get trapped in there. I'd mm. expect things to shift out of the way and my character to fall through or get crushed or whatever. Like I would ex expect for problem. Um. Yeah, behavior I I'm not intending, mm. or that I, you know, that are just like game physics. Mm. But this was so solid. Yeah, like the, the balls only moved when it made sense for them to move, mm. uh, and the animation system worked basically flawlessly with Link moving through the balls, like mm. jumping up and trying to climb around all these different heights. Like there was no jitteriness. Yeah, yeah. Was, I just and keeping in mind this is on the Switch. Yeah, which is. Not a strong system. Mm. Like, it's genuinely impressive what they've done. It really is. Like, even, I think even in, like, Breath of the Wild, I remember not ever running into too many, like, well, even, I can't even think of a single yeah, time no, I ran it, into, like, a, a physics problem in, in Breath of the Wild. just very polished. Yeah, and this has even more physics going on. And yeah, things and that... Mm -hmm. actually need like the fan custom physics as well yeah like player driven physics yeah which is just ridiculous yeah <laughs> like I, you can build so many weird things you can take any object in your inventory that you can drop yeah can be fused to something yeah that's that's wild yeah so like i had like i, I made a chain of the choo-choo jellies oh right you know the little blue yeah, yeah. guys i just made a chain of the choo-choo jellies like the things they drop, yeah, and it just works. Like there's nothing. It just works fine. Nothing wrong with it. I I moved the chain over to a fire, yeah, and um and the choo choo jelly started to burn, yeah, and then some of them popped into the, their yellow form, yeah, which is like the explosive form. Did they stay and stuck together? No, they did. They broke, but that's that's fine. fine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I mean, technically, it becomes a different it's a different object. Item. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it just made sense. But I could have probably slapped those things back together. Yeah. Um. There was, it's just it's just so I, very impressive. I picked system. up a uh, a huge like spear uh -huh. recently, uh -huh. and I was like, oh, this is a, this is like a huge long weapon. I uh -huh. don't remember seeing one of these before, and then I realized it's it actually stick. like two weapons, like yeah. glued two spear, regular size <laughs> yes. spears glued together. And I was yeah. like, oh my god! And I like that they have those already around the place uh -huh. because, like, yeah, I know that you could put objects onto things, but. I didn't really think of like putting an, a weapon onto another weapon. Yeah. Like I or like, and then then right. I'm like, well, how big can I make a spear? Mm. Can I just continually mm. glue more and what more is the weapons? To that? So uh, the, I kind don't. of need to know. There is there is an answer. Once an item has been fused, you can't fuse it again. Uh, okay. So, I see. but there's there's a difference between fusion and ultra hand. So that's a really yeah. important distinction. Yeah. Um, ultra hand is like sticking objects together and using the physics to do stuff basically, yeah. and fusion is like sticking specific objects together and combining their properties to make a new object to make a yeah. new object basically yeah um so like you can that's where the two weapons thing comes around mm. um but you can do all sorts of stuff it's not just limited to like weapons yeah um you can put a mushroom on a spear and then it makes the spear bounce enemies back when you hit them oh wow <laughs> um, i i found a spear that had a fish on it and i was like is that a, is that glued or is that just like someone had been spear fishing? <laughs> <laughs> question um have you found any of the new enemies other than the constructs? Uh, yes. What have you found? Uh, so in one of those caves that we were talking about, uh -huh. there were these like weird, uh, almost monkey type guys. Yeah. They're called horriblins. Yeah. And uh, they look, yeah, yeah. you're, you're kind of right. They look like monkey. Well, they, they swing around on the roof. Yeah. They swing around on the roof. Um, they crawl on the roof, in fact. They, they, they move around. And and that's probably where you got your double spear. So they yes, they that use is like where I got super, the that is where I got the double spear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They use these super long range spear weapons. Yeah. to hit you from the roof. Oh. They're really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, 
Yeah, you really got to, like, look up when you yeah. go into things. You probably, while you were on the island, you probably also saw a different one, which is the like like. It looks like a giant, like, barnacle stuck to the roof. Is it a big worm thing? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it's I, like I a, did see that thing. Yeah. Did you kill it? Yeah. It was, it, I killed two of them. Nice. Yeah. Those things are pretty hard. Yeah. You, they... Uh, they're a classic Zelda enemy. Yeah. And in other Zelda games, they're they're really slow moving. Mm. And they have a lot of health, and they're real. They're they're easy to like kill, mm. but they're also a bit scary because they will eat your items. Oh, really? And they'll eat your items in this as well. Oh. But in this, they're quite a lot more difficult because they have this one weak point. Yeah. That's like protected that yeah. you have to lure out. Yeah. It only their weak point only appears. When they attack you. Yeah. So you have to yeah. wait for them to attack you and then hit them right at the, at the right time to, like, basically stop their attack. And they... they... And they get weak weak for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But, but, man, the first time I came up against that, I was like, what the hell is this yeah. thing? How do I... And it's, like, basically right in a path. So it's, like, my way forward <laughs> is past this thing. Yeah. yeah. And I threw a bunch of bombs at it. And I was like, that hurt it, but it didn't kill it. Yeah. It's... It was... uh. They've done some clever things this game. They did a little bit of this in uh, Breath of the Wild as well. Yeah. Where they take the existing enemies and they make a bunch of different varieties of them as well. Mm. So um, the like like, I found two other kinds so far. Oh, really? One is covered in rocks mm. and it spits boulders at you. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, which I could, you could use the, the, uh, the other ability we haven't talked about, which is uh, recall. Yep. You can reverse the project the trajectory of the boulders it's spitting at you, so that it nice. flies it back into it, mm. yeah, cracks the rock shell, and then it's just spitting cool. like a normal like like. Um, the other one I found was spitting lightning projectiles at me. It was a lightning. Oh my god! And that one was really hard. Yeah, holy hell! <laughs> um, I want to tell you about uh, a stretch of maybe an hour or two yep. of Zelda I played yep. the other night because I think this perfectly exemplifies why this game is great. Yep. Uh, I was going towards uh, sort of the general vicinity of an objective mm -hmm. to have. Like, it's one of the main quest objectives. Yep. Um, and I was just sort of taking a, a loose route. Uh, I was actually sort of sticking to one of the paths. Okay. And then off to the side, I saw a guy sort of, you know, fair bit off the road. Mm. Um, and he was standing in front of the mouth of a cave. And I go over to talk mm. to him. And he's talking about, like, how he has heard all these rumors about caves. And he's he wants to go in and get the treasure that he sh he's heard is in this cave. Yep. But he's afraid. Um, but I go in, um, I'm pretty sure this is the cave. It's like kind of a, a winding circuitous okay. cave with a river running through it. Okay. Lots of little, uh, waterfalls as you're walking through the cave. Okay. Like, cause the, you're kind of going up through the cave. Um, and I noticed that there's like a glowing effect behind one of the waterfalls, like just a loose glow. Hmm. Uh, and I, I go behind the waterfall and there's like a little shrine with like a chest and I, oh, I, nice. I open up the chest and I get some, some gear. Um, and then I go back out and I go, well, I finish up going to the top of the cave and the cave sort of has a dead end, mm -hmm. um, except that there's like a little hole in the ceiling where water's pouring through. Oh yeah. So I use my ascend ability and I go back up to the surface. And yep. when I get to the surface, I'm in front of a stable. Huh. Uh, and so I'm in front of the stable and I go there and, uh, there's like a well near the stable. So I, I jump down and I explore the well for a little while, which is another cave. Wow. I go back up. Yeah. Um, someone at the stable tells me that there's like an NPC nearby that I should talk to. So I go talk to that NPC. Yeah. And it's this giant, she, it's one of the important NPCs and she's investigating this giant glyph that's on the ground right in front of the stable. Right. Okay. Um, and I, I do this like glyph thing. Yep. I don't want to spoil yep. that too much. Okay. Um, and there's also a shrine nearby at the stable. Um, after I do the glyph thing, um, I go over this hill, and there's, like, a few bokoblins around a camp. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'll fight these bokoblins. I walk over, and um, they spot me. They blow their horn. And then the camp rises out of the ground. Oh, my and, God. And it's on the back of a stone talus. Oh, my God. And so I'm fighting this bokoblin camp on the back of a stone talus. <laughs> um, and this is within, like, uh, at no point had I been out of sight of any of these yeah, things. Yeah, like, yeah. it was all... It was just a sequence of events with virtually no mm. downtime. It was it was this and then this and then this and then this. Yeah. But um, Breath of the Wild was pretty good at that. Yes. Yeah. There was always like, there was always something on the horizon, 
or nearby that yeah. took your interest. One of the things in Breath of the Wild, though, or at least for me anyway, was that those things, when they took your interest, would quite often take like ages to get there. Mm. Like yeah, you but, might be like, okay, mm. I want to go to this thing that's up a, up the mountain, but yeah. then you're looking at like at least a few minutes of like actual climbing, yeah. and that is pretty heavy downtime compared to like it sure. sounds like this is mm. much more so, condensed. It's it's interesting because they give you. I think it's. I don't know that it's necessarily more condensed, but they've given you better tools to navigate the world. Yeah. So in Breath of the Wild, um, most of your tools were about, um, like puzzles or like environment manipulation, and very little of it was for like navigation. Mm. Uh, cryonesis or cryo the the ice block skill mm. whatever it was called, um, that was probably your only really navigation themed ability and it was was still that was a pain yeah it was it was kind of hard to use yeah doing a whole like uh like what do you call it stepping stone yeah type thing across like like a lake it was just a pain yeah um at least compared to (laughs) to what you can do in this game ascend for example gets you out of any cave Mm. at pretty much at any point and it will just get you back to the surface wherever is mm. um but it, it can also be used to like get to a platform that's above you mm. you know if if you're if you've just cl- cleared out a camp of, of bokoblins um in, in breath of the wild sometimes they have these towers and you could yep. have to like climb a ladder to get to the yeah, top of them yeah, yeah. instead you can just use ascend and you zip up mm. immediately but um if you find a, a cave in a cliff face i think that cliff face is really tall and you don't want to climb it you can just ascend to the top yeah okay that sounds really nice because i spent mm. like a lot, a lot of time just climbing walls. Yeah. In Breath of the Wild. Yeah. I mean, I would see something, I would go on to go up there and I would just like be determined to go up yeah. there. Yeah. Sometimes and like save in case your stamina was going <laughs> to run out halfway up. Yeah. And then it would, <laughs> halfway up, it would start to rain. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, oh no. They've got, <laughs> they've got uh, items that give you like rain climbing ability. Oh, nice. Now. That's like, good. Like there's, you can craft like yeah. elixirs and stuff that will let you climb in the rain. I swore in Breath of the Wild that like any time I started climbing something tall, <laughs> it just started raining <laughs> halfway, and I'm like, oh my god! I remember climbing to some really tall place where there was a shrine and a tower. Yeah. Um, and uh, I had to wait at on a on a ledge, <laughs> like for the rain to stop yeah. before I could start climbing. Again. Had you considered lighting a fire and and resting? the day oh i didn't even think of that no yeah, yeah. No. they give but, me a lot of tools but the to thing avoid is that was things. i mean that's true i didn't even think of that um yeah. but that is a memory of mine that i'm just like it just felt like a real a real situation that i'm just like stuck in and i was like i'm just i'm just in it yeah. i'm just living in the moment of yeah. like i'm climbing up this thing and then it starts to rain and then i'm like sitting on this ledge and i'm looking out over the vista in the rain just waiting for it to stop yeah, and then eventually it stopped, and I cl- kept climbing. <laughs> it's uh, uh, Cheers of the Kingdom is going to have some of the same elements that frustrate people, mm. that, or that frustrated people in Breath of the Wild, if they felt that way, Breath of the Wild. Um, but I think they give you more things to do in the downtime and ways to avoid it as yeah. well. So like the ways to avoid it, we've kind of covered. Although like another way to ascend mountain is to strap a rocket to your shield. <laughs> yeah, like that's a thing you can yeah. do. Yeah. Um, like there's just lots of different ways to go up in this game yep um which uh as far as i remember what, there was like one thing you could do where you could um, revali's gale was like the ability where you'd hold jump and you'd shoot mm. up into the air yeah yeah um but it did feel like a lot of the game was about getting up high places yeah. with no real mechanism other than climbing um and then whereas now it, they're like rockets sure mm. <laughs> yeah like, that does legitimately sound like it takes away a lot of the annoyances I had with. Yeah. Um, it really sounds like they took, they watched what speedrunners were doing and mm. were like, let's just make let's that it. part of the game. I mean, the Ascend ability apparently actually started as a QA tool. Oh, really? Yeah, it was like, <laughs> wow. a, it was like, a, a, like a, a debugging tool. Yeah. yeah. Um, wow. So <laughs> I kind of love that because yeah. how many games can you think of where they, they saw that 
they, they went, oh, actually, this makes this game better. Yeah. Let's just put it in. <laughs> it's basically like having, because we have no clip in um, Path of Exile. In our, yep. It's just like, what if we made that part of the game? It's, just, <laughs> yeah. it's crazy. Yep. <laughs> uh, so uh, the other thing they do is they, they give you ways to do stuff during your downtime. Like uh, there are zone of cooking pots. So you can just deploy a cooking pot wherever you are. Mm. You can just cook I for a while. I actually really like that. Yeah. Because I hated... Well, it was it was an uh, it was like an upkeep thing of like if you're getting low on food, oh, I've got to find a go to a town, go, go to a town, go yeah. to a stable, you know. Yeah. Or it's like, oh, I've just gotten to the the mountain region and I don't have the warming food I need. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Um, I need to go back. Yeah. But now it's like I can actually just make something now. Yeah. Immediately, which I I really like. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Um and. They they've added a lot to the recipe system. Okay. Like there's lots of new ingredients. Like lots. Yeah. Uh. So, should we talk about some of like the stuff you haven't seen yet? Yeah. All right. <laughs> like the underground area. Yeah. Tell me, tell me about that. Like that blows my mind. <laughs> that reminds me a lot of um. Elden Ring. Elden Ring. When... And when you felt that feeling when you first found the underground place and you're just like, oh, there's a whole other thing. You realize that the map is like I don't know twice as large as it. Yeah, it, it actually is. Yeah. yeah. So it, this is that's true basically for Tears of the Kingdom. Holy heck! Except then you've also got the sky. Then you've also got the sky. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, and and also just the fact that there's there's like kind of two kinds of underground. Yeah. There's like the like I said, there's wells and caves. Oh yeah, yeah. which are sometimes extensive. Yeah. Like m- okay, s- multiple chambers. Wow. Breakable walls, secret yep. tunnels, all sorts of stuff. Um, and then there's uh like the, the what they call like the deep or the chasm right which is uh the 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 gaps where hyrule castle oh yeah like went raised up it left yeah. this big hole in the ground right yeah you can fall in there whoa and you fall for a really long time <laughs> <laughs> and then you got you get to like the surface yeah um and it's pitch black holy heck but you've got these things called like uh bright seeds yep and um this might have been a thing in Ocarina in, in, in Breath of the Wild, um, but I never used it. But you can just throw items in your inventory. Did you know that? Throw and, them. Yeah, I'm not talking weapons. I'm talking like items. I mean, items. I know you can drop them, but yeah, no, you can throw them. I don't so, remember th- being able to throw anything. In. Yeah, I, I, I think you might, you might have been able to, but I just hmm. never used it. But yeah. If you basically, if you hold down the button to throw your weapon, yeah. And then you press up on the D-pad in, oh. in Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. It'll bring up your like, inventory items. Yeah. And then you can just select one, and it'll swap out your weapon for that. Oh, yeah. So you can just throw bright seeds. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, they'll light up portions of this pitch black area. That's good, because I went through a small pitch black section, and mm-hmm. I uh, attached it to my uh, arrow. Um, yes, you yeah. can do that too. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, then I'm using arrows. Yeah, so you can yeah. just hurl them like grenades. Oh, that's good. Um, so it, I think you're talking about the minecart area, right? Uh, there was, yeah, the minecart area yeah. had that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is a whole area of just basically that. Wow. But it's got its own ecosystem. Oh. It's got its own trees. It's got its own insects. Oh, my God. That's so it's exciting. It's got its own enemies. <laughs> it's got its own mechanic. Yeah. So so this is gloom mechanic, which is like there's patches on the ground that are like purpley and swirly. Yeah. And if you stand in them. Uh, you'll lose a heart, but oh. it'll be a you'll lose a maximum heart. Right. So it like can't be refilled until you go back to the surface. Oh, yeah. Holy heck! So it's it's pretty scary, mm-hmm. and um, the enemies in there will deal gloom damage. Oh my god! As well, dude, so, this is this is amazing. So it's like an attrition mechanic. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, that keeps. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the criticisms leveled against Breath of the Wild was like you can cook basically max heart food yeah and that was just sort of how you could get through the game without ever actually bothering with most of the mechanics yeah yeah um and this prevents you from kind of doing that, that is cool i like it i like that a lot uh it's that just sounds fun it's, <laughs> it's really cool and it's scary yeah that's what um that's what i like though because I, I like breath of the wild started off quite scary yeah uh because you're very weak and right. i and like so does this because you're you're back to being like, yeah three heart Three heart guy, um, <laughs> we call him Three Heart Link. Three Heart Link, um, but uh, you know, eventually, 
you you became like so powerful that really nothing nothing much really um bothered you. Yeah. Yeah, um, you could kind of make the game really quite easy. Yeah. yeah, just getting enough hearts. Yeah. And in armor, like you could upgrade yeah. all of your armor yeah, and get yeah. tons of damage reduction. Well and... you can get so powerful that the game then becomes like this just play thing. Yeah. Which is still fun. Yeah, but it's yeah. it's not the that's why you like uh what was it, Tidal Island or no what what's it called? Uh, Evertide Island. Evertide Island. Yeah. Because it knocks you back down, takes away all your stuff. So reverts start you, again. Start again. <laughs> and you're back to that like scrounging yeah. around and hitting stuff with sticks. Uh-huh. Um, which is great. But then it sounds like there's a dungeon. That it kind doesn't of quite, it kind doesn't quite of, do that, but it does. It does. But it has the potential the... to still hurt you quite a lot. Yeah, and, and like you can't just max heart your way through it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, now there are like recipes you can cook to restore that max heart stuff. Oh yeah. But I I think that's fine, like because it's yeah. it's a mechanic you're engaging yeah. in, and it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. different to just like you know the one recipe. Yeah. And man, there's just so much to this game. That is it's, very cool. It's I've done maybe about. 10 or 11 shrines mm. now and i've done maybe about 30 korok seeds oh right have you um met have you upgraded your inventory space no i haven't met hestu yet oh okay have you i have not either and okay. i'm wondering when i can do that <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting you start off with more inventory you space do in this game, <laughs> it and, still and feels like while. This. but it feels i would argue it feels more constrained and that's because of the fusion mm. mechanic you your weapons are so tied to your utility now yeah. that you want to keep a range of different kinds oh, yeah. of weapons. And then you always kind of want to have some blank slots to do more stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Which is really exciting. Yeah. Because, like, uh, every time you find a new object, it's like, what can I do with this? Yeah. What, what is a beam emitter on a, so on a shield cool. do? Yeah. I, I don't know. I still don't know. <laughs> is there a limited space for the um, capsules? No. So you can just carry around yep. as many as you want. They're just they just yeah. in your inventory like uh like apples. Yeah. You know, you yeah. can just have a million of them. Yeah. You know, like a person would. Like a, a million apples a million. on your person. You don't carry around a million apples? <sighs> what happens right? if what happens if I you lose a heart? mushrooms? <laughs> <laughs> That's cheating because you can dry them. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. what a great game. It's great. It's um it's I've, it's got that thing that uh I hadn't actually felt in Breath of the Wild for a while because, like, I'd been playing that game for a lot and I felt like I'd really explored quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but it's got that thing of, like, there's so much to explore that you just feel like you can't explore it all at once. Like, just yes. even on that starting island, I ran around <laughs> like a maniac, just yeah. being like, what's over here? What's uh-huh. over here? <laughs> like, running around and, not, like, not really moving on from a section until I felt like I had yeah. fully experience that whole little area yeah uh, and and even so i still left that area feeling like i definitely didn't like explore everything there at all like you, you definitely didn't i know that there's <laughs> I, I know there's like a there's a there's what the cube the, the cube, cube boss, boss. The, yeah it's called a flux construct yeah so i didn't fight that thing but i saw it uh and was like i'm uh, sure i'll get there yeah. eventually but um no totally optional no, yeah Totally optional. And it's really interesting to me because, like, uh, it's not super easy to get there. The Navigating that starting island, because it's got a giant donut hole in the middle, mm. is quite tricky. Uh, it's broken up into sections. Yeah. Uh, you have to build a lot of bridges. It you flowed. Have to build lots of bridges. You have, to, uh, you have to eat lots of warming food. Yeah. There's, like, lots of different things you have to do just to sort of navigate. It mm. flowed really well, though, I, I felt. Like, once I got to the... Because uh, you're, you're aiming for this t- time temple at the start. So you once... When... It's called the Temple of Time. Time this, temple. Time, temple. This oh, time temple. Temple. <laughs> time, this temple. Temple. <laughs> I, I quit this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you're heading for this uh, Temple of Time. And then once you get there, they're like, okay, now you got to go to these shrines, right? Very mm. much like that first plateau. But um, I remember looking at the map going like, how am I going to navigate this thing yeah you know and then i just sort of started kind of flows. started going around like yeah. from interesting thing to interesting thing and then before i knew it i was like halfway around this donut and i was like yeah. oh my god this flows so well <laughs> you know and then you get to the end and then you can look through and be like oh, I, I remember being there i remember yep. being there i remember being there i yep. mean it's 
it's so great. It's I just, very, I very really well like designed. It. I really like it a lot. Um, uh, I, I, I yeah. did. I hit a hiccup on that island. Oh yeah. Uh, and I wonder if Stacey, you said that um, that she got a bit lost. And yeah. It might well, have been the same thing I had. Part lost, part. I think she got a little bit frustrated with the um, combining. What's it called? Like the hand combining the, skill. Yeah, like, ultra um, hand. Yeah. yeah. Hand combining, yeah, that, that's the <laughs> official term, right? Yeah, sticky hands. Sticky hands, yeah. Sticky hands, um, yeah. And that it sounded like she had to do the same thing, like, several times in a row. Ah. And just got a little bit, I guess, put off by that. Right, okay. Um, But, I, like, I get it, it's a tutorial. They really want to, like, enforce. Yeah. But it was sort of enough for her to, like, stop playing for a bit. Oh, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, the part I got, I guess, a lot bit lost on, uh, in the ice mountain area, you can't climb up the ice walls, mm. and so you have to look for a little sliver of non-ice wall to climb up, and I did not even think to look for that. Oh. I just kept, I circled the, the, like, the, the mountain. Yeah. And then I went down. Yeah. And I kept going down, and I thought, oh, it must be, like, some sort of circuitous route. You gotta go down before up. you go yeah. up. And, yeah. uh, I... <laughs> I ended up basically crossing back over to the starting area. Yeah. Which was kind of a, a one way thing. Oh, no. And, oh, no. And to go back and do it all again. Oh, no. But and then I found I found this little sliver of land that I could climb up. And I also found out I could have just gone back, no problem, and it would have been fine. I, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I ran into a similar thing. Yeah. Like, I, I got to a point where it's like I knew you had to find the little sliver to climb yeah, up. Okay. And then to, but then from there to get to the actual top. Yeah. It looked like I had to like fight, like go sort of down to a lower platform and then climb up this sliver. Uh, um, but that wasn't. The and case I was like, I don't like that. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> what I did, uh, yeah. there was a big tree. Yeah, just outside the cave. Yeah, just outside I saw the that cave. as well. I, was I, like, just, yeah, maybe I, I climbed up the that. tree and then I was like right at the shrine. I was like, yep. great, done. Yep. You know. Yep. yep. Um, man, what a great game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, I didn't so feel excited. like I short doing that. I feel like there's a good chunk that I just missed out completely yeah. because I didn't go this way where I had to like climb up this like little little sliver in the yeah. In there's the like a little monster encounter, like a construct plat- plateau thing. Yeah, and there's like uh, I think there's like Korok seed or two around there. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, speaking of Korok seeds, uh-huh. uh, there was a uh, there were a, there was a encounter with a Korok with a giant backpack. Uh-huh. And he was like, oh, I need to get over to my friend on the other side over there. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll, make, a, I'll make a thing and get over there. And uh-huh. I, I made it, walked over to the other guy, and he's like, oh, my friend, he's over there. And I was like, what? I don't understand. Uh-huh. Like, I, I've just solved the puzzle. <laughs> and then I, I just carried on, was like, I'll, maybe I'll come back to it later. I found another guy uh-huh. like that, like <laughs> an hour later. Yeah. Did the, sa- did the same thing. And I'm like, what is up? Uh-huh. With these guys, and then just using the ultra hand, yeah. suddenly realized that the Korok you backpack pick him up. is highlighted. <laughs> yeah, and so I picked him up and put him in this the contraption I made, and yep. like went across there with him. Then put him up and put him yep. next to his friend, yep. and he's, he's like, like "I made it!" <laughs> oh my god, I like that. Um, there's lots of those, and some of them are like huge gaps. Oh, like, really? Like gaps that will require you to like build something quite yeah ridiculous uh but that didn't even really i didn't <laughs> at all think that i could pick up the guy <laughs> there are a few new Korok puzzle mechanics yeah which i really like like i, I like that they've up to the variety i mean they already had a, quite a few in, in breath of the wild but yeah like, they've got some of the classics you know your your metal blocks yep um uh, and you're they got the the stone circles. I found stone one of circles. those. Yep. You're diving into a circle one, and they've got uh, like shooting balloons. They've yep. got a, they've got a bunch. Rock of the tree. Yep, rock of yep. the tree is, is back. Um, some of the new ones. Uh, there's the the pair reuniting the pair. Yep, which is like probably the hardest of the bunch, mm. but also rewards two core seeds. Oh right, I, I actually one. didn't even realize it rewarded me yep. two. That's cool because you, you're helping two core. Yeah, one. yeah. But That's it's cool. also because it's like way more effort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, than lifting a rock, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then they've got like uh, like a dandelion. Sometimes you'll find a dandelion. Oh. And uh, if you you I if you hit it with a gust, it will produce like a dandelion seed. Oh. 
and it will fall. And I think the challenge is to catch the dandelion seed before it touches the ground. Oh, weird. <laughs> um, so I've done a couple of those. I found one that was like, you have to use ascend through a Korok, like wood platform thing. Yeah. Like uh, on, it was on the underside of the Temple of Time. Oh, really? Um, yeah, there's like a broken pillar. Oh. And I was like, that's cool. And I went under there, and there was like a little wooden circle thing, and I yeah. used to send, and I went to the top, and I was like, here's a Korok seed. Oh, wow. Great. So how does the send actually work? Like, do you just pick an area above you and just pop up it's, to it? It's the area directly above Link, wherever Link is. Yeah. So it's you, you can have the ability basically active, and you can move around, and it'll tell you when you're at basically in a valid area. And a valid yeah. area, as far as I can tell, is like there's a there's a maximum height that it'll work on. Mm. Um as in, like, a maximum space between Link and the ceiling, not between Link and his eventual destination. Oh, okay. Yeah, because so you can go you can through go a mountain. very far. Yeah. Okay. You can go extremely far, like, upwards. Yeah. Um, and I think it also maybe has to be flat. Yeah, I, the, There's some, I think, some it, sort I think of it does. There's some sort of restriction. I think it does. Um, I have noticed that, because uh, I ascended up through some of the floating islands. Yeah. And the floating islands have uh, uneven rocks underneath mm. yeah except they have these um like tall pillar things that are coming down with flat mm. flat okay. ends yeah and that's like part of the ancient like architecture yeah mm. uh but it it like the the icon that is projected onto the surface that you're shooting through uh that will glow green when you're yeah when you can shoot through it and it yeah. only did that on that flat so like, they've got surface. like that's probably good for some puzzles and stuff, right? Where they've got like a specific place where yeah. they want you to yeah, start. Yeah, and they can yeah. Just make everything else rough, and then yeah, exactly. But but it's also loose enough that in the general world, it works ninety five percent of the mm. time. So yeah. like, I'm walking through a cave, and at pretty much any point, I yeah. can just go to the surface. Yeah, and and that it will support that no matter where the surface is. Mm. Yeah, like I could it could take me to the very top of a mountain. It could take me to like inside someone's home. Yeah, and it works. Yep. There there is a thing. In caves, uh, to watch out for though, where because you can have uh, platforms inside caves, yeah, with treasure on top of them. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I when I beat those um, horriblins, those horriblins, yep. they have these little platforms. They, they had mushrooms they had these stuff. platforms up on up oh, high, no. and I was like, oh great, there's treasure up there. Walked up, <laughs> walked up to what I thought was I was directly under one, hit ah. ascend, and I popped up at the top of a mountain. It was like. Oh no! <laughs> but you can, you can you can go back down. Well, you can. Yeah. Oh no, you can. But I just automatically. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the the it's it's a great mechanic because it freezes mm. time when you use it. Yeah. Um. And so you'll appear at your destination, and you basically confirm whether or not you actually want to pop through. Yeah. Um. And time's frozen. You can look around. You can make sure that you're where you want to be. Mm. If you don't want to be there, you press B and it, yeah. it sends you back down mm. to your original location. But if you're unpa- impatient and just yeah, if you're just Blake, <laughs> automatically hit okay when you didn't mean to, and you're like, "Oh crap!" Now I'm at the top of a mountain. <laughs> yeah, um, it's really good. I really like Ascend. It's it's probably it is cool. I think it might be the how long did was there some time period it took you to remember that you actually have this power uh, and to remember not, to like use it? Not really, because it definitely like <laughs> I was like. Like, uh, I was still so much, I think, in the Breath of the Wild mindset of, like, traversing stuff. You know what, though? I just realized something so obvious. Yeah. You know the whole thing where I went around that mountain? You and could have ascended? I could have just ascended. Yeah. Like, from inside of the cave. The cave is below oh, the yeah. shrine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm... See? So it turns out, yes, yeah, there was yeah. a period of time where I didn't remember that. <laughs> That's wow. a good point. Yeah, you wow. could go through. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness! What a great game! <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Um, that is great. I, I, I do kind of. I do wish, yeah, that they had a little more references to the first game story, like all the. Oh, they do. They do like all the divine beasts are just like gone, like. Uh, the... Yeah. So it, that's a fair point that the the original shrines are gone. The divine beasts are yeah. gone. Um, a lot of like the little landmark things seem to be, or at least the things that were sort of more game mechanic. Yeah, they seem to be gone. Like I get, but, I, I get why, because it's like a new game and you want yeah. the new thing. But like this is like the continuation of that same world. Like some of those things should still be there. 
Yeah. I mean, it's it's been several years. And the very fact that you get a different tablet uh-huh. annoyed me. <laughs> the Pura Pad? Yeah. I'm like, why isn't it just the same one? The, the Sheikah Slate? But I mean, I guess you could be like, okay, that one was like, the, the one you've got now is Zelda has like upgraded it maybe. Maybe that's the same one because it kind of looks like the same They do technology. go into it a little bit. But it's just like, why don't you just call it that? Because it's like that was a carryover from yeah. the old one. Uh, it's a fair point. I th- I think, so I think the justification there is that the, the Pura Pad, the Sheikah Slate that you mm. had is gone because I think you had it when you were like wiped out by Ganondorf or whatever that mummy was. Right. So like you, you lose everything. Yeah, I know you lose, right. I, I know you lose everything. So I, I, I suspect he had it then. Yeah. And it's just gone. And, yeah. and Zelda had her own thing. Yeah. And she gets it over to you. Yeah. Now I don't, that's not, I don't know. I just, I just feel theory. like I'd, this is your head cannon. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just, I just feel like I'd, I want some further connections to it. You know, um, well, just even just story wise, just mentions. You know, like they, well, the thing is, you they do, they do. Okay, yeah, you're, good. You're, 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 you've only just landed, basically, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I think you're getting a little ahead of yourself here. Okay. Do you um, think you have to play the first one to play the second? Uh no. I don't think so. And in fact, I think in some ways you'll have even better. You'll have yeah. no preconceived notions that we had of like traversal that. um, the, There's that, but also you know. like you're nothing's going to be familiar. So it's, mm. it's all going to be novel. Mm. Yeah. Like one of the great things about Breath of the Wild was how novel it was. It was so everything was so wondrous. Mm. You kind of go into a new area and there's all these crazy things. Mm. And you're like, wow, wow, wow. I do um, like that. Uh, you still get that though, as a as a player, because the, the world has changed so much. You're like, you recognize you recognize it, but it's new. You know, yeah. You appre- you can appreciate the newness of this, how and how the landscape has changed since since the other game. They've also just layered on these new elements that are wondrous in their own way. Like mm. the, I think the the ground glyphs are an example. Like those, okay, the, uh, they're called geoglyphs. I think is what they call yeah. them. Yeah. Um, the scale of them is ridiculous, and there's a mechanic associated with them. Oh wow! Um, uh, and like the whole the, the the whole height of the game, the scale of the Th- that of is going up and falling, and that is something I wild. <laughs> that is something that really surprised me. Was like like I knew we all knew there was floating islands. Yeah, I did not even think how high the floating islands would be. Yeah, like I thought you could just easily see the ground. The the thing that shocked me, like you you have this sort of intro where you you fall off of a you know you, you go from a, a starter island mm. to the main island basically yeah. right yeah um but when I went back to that starter island for like the last shrine of yeah of the starter island yeah and then I fell back down the height I did not realize just how high that was compared to yeah the other sky islands yeah <laughs> like there's huge amounts of verticality. In just the sky, yeah. Let alone the ground. That's yeah. gonna go. They have a um, they have a good mechanic of uh, if you fall into water, you are completely hundred percent fine, no matter what height you <laughs> you went you yeah. fell from. Yeah. Um, which is great because uh, jumping off the islands is like, terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I and mean, you can control your fall. Yeah. Yeah. which is good so you can aim for bodies of water so that's good but like you not, also not having the um hang glider, the hang glider was you, you get the hang glider again i <laughs> i figure i figure you well <laughs> i've seen in the trailers, the trailers you have the hang glider yeah, yeah. but like you don't have it to begin with and i'm like this is so foreign to me yeah. <laughs> without the hang glider i feel so weird you had to without find it. it in the first game though too right uh you got you it at the, at basically yeah. at the end of the starting plateau yeah. right. you, you don't have it for like you know a, an hour or so yeah yeah okay. uh so one other thing i just want to mention yeah quickly is just how good the writing in that game is oh yeah like uh you know the thing about breath of the wild that people love to critique is the quote unquote the story mm. and i think uh people tend to conflate the cutscenes with the story mm. but the cutscenes aren't the story the cutscenes are cutscenes yeah yeah and you know, the, the, there's 
there's not just one story in Breath of the Wild. There's like tons of them. Oh yeah. Every NPC is yeah. di- is has their own thing going on, and the same is true in Tears of the Kingdom. Mm. Like I went to um do you remember Hateno Village? Uh which village was that? Hateno Village is the uh it's like you may have gotten there about second in Breath of the Wild. It, it's like kind of kind of close to the the sea, but it's kind of up some mountains. Yep. Is it the one with the um? There's like a dye shop. Yes. Like, and and yes. there's like a lab up the yeah, hill. Yeah, the, the lab one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you have to do yep. the blue flame run. Yep. Thing. Yes, I remember that. Yep. So that's where you get your house. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, I made it there last night, mm-hmm. and uh, the whole village has pretty much changed. Oh, that's so cool. And there's just like lots of little storylines. Yep. Some of them are really interesting. Mm. Um, some of them are pretty straightforward. Some of them are like quite deep. Yep. And multi-part. Uh. And um, it's just all of the characters have their own thing. It's just so interesting. And con- th- there's all this yeah. internal consistency as well. Like the family members will reference each other and mm. um, they'll speak a certain way. And it's just, it's just really good writing. Um, so I think – you know, the 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 number of NPCs that I'm gonna be talking to, are, I'm, I'm just really excited. <laughs> what a great game! It is really good. <laughs> it's so it's so damn good. Um, yeah, I I'm, I want to play more. I'm excited <laughs> to just play more of it now. Yeah. Like, there's there's also the thing of like, yes, it's got all that awesome ex- exploration stuff. Yep. But I'm also just excited to just try and make wacky new contraptions. Yep. You know, yep. like just spend. You know, forty minutes trying to build a weird like plane. Yep, yep. There, I mean, you, you haven't even seen wheels yet. No. Oh my god. There are wheels. Wow. Oh, I was gonna ask. Is there anything? Uh, uh when you use the attachy hand. Yeah, ultra hand. We can Atta- just call attachy, it sticky, sticky hands is fine. Hand. Sticky yep. hands. Yep. yep. Sticky attachy hands. Um, are those bones or uh, joints always solid, or, or are they rubbery? They're, yeah. They're, they're can you do solid. any flexible yeah. ones? That uh, uh, as far as oh. I can tell, they're all rigid, but there might be materials that are flexible. Yeah. I don't really know yet. Yeah, I was um, just wondering whether you could do like um, bendable points in any of the things, like hinges, right. like hinges or anything. Good question. I don't know yet. Okay, but you can do wheels, and so and you can. I I haven't tested this yet, but I suspect you can attach things to the bottom sides of wheels. Yeah, you could like the parts that roll. Construct a hinge with a wheel, maybe. Yeah. So can you make a giant thing that walks? It's possible. I, I'm not going to rule it out. <laughs> I just started wondering uh, yeah. this earlier when you were talking about yeah. the, uh, how many uh, things thing, you can attach. The thing that you'd struggle with is having any control over the walking motion. Yeah. Because most of it is uh, done by either weight distribution or direct force. There's no like – and, and it's, it's either on or it's off. Yeah. Like on mass. So if you were to make a pair of legs and you were to put – uh, fans to move the the legs, both fans would turn on at the same time, so you'd get both legs moving at the same time, in the same right. direction or in whatever direction those fans are, are pointed in. So I think you'd be pretty hard pressed to make something that walks. Have you seen that uh, the contraptions that dude makes on the beach that are all the wind powered ones? Wind powered. Oh yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> I know exactly. The, That's the, a lot the of wind hinges, pieces though. or whatever. <laughs> That's a lot of hinges. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a good point. I wonder how much you can do with wind. Because there are places that are just yeah. kind of forever windy as yeah, well. Yeah. Oh, man. I I have seen on the internet uh, someone made a humanoid with a giant flaming penis. <laughs> that sounds great. So you can do that. Yep. Uh, can you put a hinge on that penis, though? Um, <laughs> like I said, maybe. I think if you put a if you put a rocket, you, and then... if you put a wheel in the middle of the penis, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, great. I'm very excited. There's there's so many things. There's all these little ingredients I've collected that I haven't even hmm. really taken a close look at. Like I don't know what you can do with the cannon yet. With what? The cannon. Oh right, yeah, yeah. Like, I I can strap that to the front of a car probably and drive around shooting stuff put it on a shield and see what happens. i could put it on a shield i could put it on a sword i could just cannon sword gun sword put it on a block if i wanted to yeah um uh, we can haven't even put it on an arrow and fire it at someone 
You, I think you can. Yeah. I think you can. I, I've seen someone put a rock and, and a rocket on an arrow Ooh. and fire a rocket arrow. Holy hell. Um, rocket I read you cannon. Could, I read you can, there were boomerangs in Breath of the Wild that were mm. pretty crummy. Yeah. Mm. And I've heard you could put a rocket on a boomerang, and it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, like, That's great. The, the sheer number of permutations of cool stuff that you can just try exploring, and some of it will be effective, some of it won't be, but, mm. like, it's exciting. I really like um, it's given an extra use for the the monster parts. Yeah, it and monster parts have become really important. Yeah, because they used to just be uh, elixirs and yeah, and like I mostly basically always just sold them all because I just didn't need elixirs all that much. But yeah. now I'm like, actually, no, I'll, I'll hold on to a bunch of them because they increase damage and increase like all sorts of things. Actually, the, there's a thing that you may not have had addressed yet in game yeah but um all weapons in the game world are degraded oh really yeah you know how you keep finding what rusty things yeah yeah yeah, yeah. or it's all everything's rusty oh wow. even the best like the the royal yeah the whatever's are they're all rusty huh and like every it, basically when that mummy awoke mm. all weapons were became corroded whoa um and so to make do you have to fuse things to like these crummy weapons I to make see. them not. that's cool yeah it's it they've created an in-world explanation to yeah. make this mechanic basically not mandatory but like yeah. extremely useful because i was yeah. i was wondering if um any of the like other weapons from breath of the wild shop like even just something like i remember having like a really good sledgehammer yeah for smashing rocks you uh, make your own yeah i know you can make your own now but like <laughs> does that mean that Sledgehammers just don't exist anymore. I haven't seen sledgehammers yet, but I found like a I found a royal claymore, for example. Yeah. Okay. It's like a a fairly high tier weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And uh, I fused a talus stone talus heart to it. Oh. So it's got a giant stone. It basically turned it into a giant stone. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. Okay. Um. And d- did crazy damage. Whoa. What they actually really uh, this is probably we're basically out of time, but I'll talk about one more thing. Yeah. They have made the itemization in this game much deeper. So in Breath of the Wild, item stats basically just go up, mm. right? Like the higher, the better tier an item, like a soldier's weapon is worse than a knight's weapon is yeah. worse than a royal weapon. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, and then you might find like mo- random modifiers, like one random modifier yeah. on that weapon. So like durability up, for example. Yeah. yeah. Um, in this, the tier seems to indicate both damage and sometimes durability, mm. but um, more so, it, it determines, like, it has, like, a special property. Hmm. So, like, a soldier's weapon, for example, um, I think it has, like, a faster charge. Like, you can charge your do hmm. use your charge attacks mm-hmm. more quickly, hmm. whereas a royal weapon has, like, a better flurry attack. Oh, like okay. Like, the, the counterattack mechanic. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got Zonai weapons. Right. Which, um, they get their attack boosted when they're fused to a Zonai item, hmm. or a Zonai shield will use a Zonai item more efficiently. Hmm. So, like, if you want to use your flamethrower shield, hmm. you get a Zonai shield, and you, it'll last longer. It's better. Oh, hmm. wow. So, like, the base type now determines sort of a special property of the item rather than just yeah. basic stats. And, okay. and you can enhance that through the fusion system. It's really clever. And yeah, it's like, so cool. It's made me think about, okay, what do I actually want to carry around with? Yeah, me? yeah. Really good. Really, really good. That I'm is, very that is really cool, because... Yeah, I, like I've only scratched the surface. I'm yeah. so excited. <laughs> <sighs> I'm gonna. Uh, sorry, listeners, we're gonna, you're gonna hear about Zelda for the next four months. Yep. Um. <laughs> Probably longer because it might take me four years to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> God, I hope not. <laughs> well, I've already had like four months of Zelda, so they'll be well prepared. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they've had m- much longer than four months of Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> about seven years. Um. Okay. Uh, I'm out of things for now, and we're also out of time. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. guys got anything else you want to say before we go? I'm good. You're good? I'm good. We'll we'll talk about uh, X4 on another podcast, I think. Yeah, maybe next one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Possibly with a guest. Maybe with a guest, if we can. Yeah. yeah. So look forward to that. Yeah. Otherwise, thank you for listening. You can email us at frenziequestions.gmail.com. Um, just uh, in the subject, put Blake Y, and then tell us what you like about Zelda. <laughs> um, and then say, it's Blake just... Y, is it going to take you four years? 
<laughs> it, I'll tell you why, because it's such a good game. I want to savor it. Yeah. I want to just savor it. I'm, I'm savoring it as well, yeah. but I'm also playing it as much as I possibly <laughs> yeah, can. Yeah. It's like a delicious <laughs> cake that you... <laughs> that I'm... I'm it's, <laughs> it's like a huge cake, though. It's a cake that you... You're, you're well, shoving I mean, there's at least it. three layers, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And some sub layers yeah, in there, some yeah. sort of like kind of gray area. Like, oh, I found a good pocket in this game. <laughs> <Yeah. thing. laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be back in a couple weeks. Bye. Like I have, I have Zelda themed dreams and stuff. <laughs> I do kind of miss getting that into a game. This is, I, I used to I get it a lot. Like. I was getting that with X4, and it's not cool. <laughs> you compared it to Morrowind, which, by the way, yeah. you spelled Morrowind wrong Did in, I? like, three different ways. Did I? It's one <laughs> word. <laughs> Classic. Uh, Just the wind that blows off a fresh milk yeah, in yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, my, yeah. I still think of it a bit like Morrowind. Only in its fucking lack of direction. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, okay, <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Uh, Marwan actually gave great directions, but they were given to you as directions. As in, like, Go look here. for this landmark, yeah. Yeah, turn yeah, yeah. left, then follow the path oh, until yeah, no, this whatever. Is way worse than that. Yeah. The, the, Marwan relied on you actually reading, which uh, turned a lot of people off. Mm. Yeah. No, this is more like... You walk into like a kitchen and someone's like make a sandwich, but then like all there is in the pantry is like flour mm. and yeast. Yeah, and all the right. ingredients are in another house somewhere down the street. Yeah, so they won't tell you where. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah, sounds exactly. horrible. It's got some well, they'll, seri- they'll serious tell, problems. They'll tell such you. A good game. They'll tell you that you need to go to the end of the driveway because the ingredients are somewhere past the end of the driveway. <laughs> but then after that, they're like, you have to find it yourself. Yeah, awful. <laughs> and actually, it's like like twelve driveways. Yeah, I remember in Morrowind. There's a part in. Did you guys play Morrowind? You yeah. played Morrowind. Oh yeah. So very very long ago. Yeah. Did you finish it? Nah. Like, no. No, I never it? finished it. Okay. Did you get up to the part where you're declared the Nerevarine? I think I did. Yeah. So do you remember? There's like to get to that part. Yeah. You have to go to like the Ashlanders. Yeah. Like tribal area. Yes. And I remember. There's this, there's this specific quest just to find the place. And it was like, you have to go north yeah. and you have to follow this path. And when and somewhere along the path, there's going to be this extra tall spire. Mm. And then you need to go west from that spire mm. and you'll eventually find yeah, like this series of huts or whatever. And I remember specifically that because it was like, this is the perfect example of where Morrowind and Oblivion diverged. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. was like really specific written directions in mm. Morrowind. And then just a pin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really like that in Morrowind. Like, this is... I actually really liked it as well. It, I... it, it made the world feel grounded. It yeah. made me feel clever for finding places. Mm. Oh, yeah. The video gamification of the Elder Scrolls series, yeah. I think, has actually made it worse. Oh. Um, my comparison to Morrowind is more of a personal comparison, not like... Right. Not like... Oh, you know, this system is just like this system. It's more like the feeling it gives me is the same feeling of discovery yeah. that Morrowind gave me. Yeah. Where I, as I started playing, realizing how big the game uh-huh. was. Dude, you're going to have the exact same experience for, for Tears of the Kingdom, and I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I started playing X4 as well. Are you liking it? Oh, boy. That's a long, long pause. Oh, it, it's boy. It's like... Uh, the thing is, I keep going back to it. Yeah. But I have, like, some serious problems with, like, yeah, how they communicate things or lack thereof. Yep. I, I agree. And it does, does not respect your time at all. <laughs> if, if ever there's a game I've played that's been like, yo, fuck your time. Yeah. We just, we just don't care. We're just going to, like, throw yeah. stuff at you and then you figure it out. It's that game. I don't think I've Googled what to do in a game more than X4. And just, yeah, but, just simple things like, yeah. how do you like, how do you <laughs> launch these drones? And <laughs> and the and the thing I found was like, uh, yeah, the AI doesn't do it. 
So <laughs> you've got to do it yourself. And I'm like, what? And also, like, all the search results fucking suck. Yeah. They're so bad. You end up looking at, like, Steam community forums where, like, yeah, someone's yeah, asked a question. Yeah. That's exactly what happened to you. Oh. And there's one passive aggressive yeah. reply from just some random dude. <laughs> but that, that question would have been asked three years ago. And they, yeah. the game hasn't, like, improved it since yeah. then. Wait, it's it's in early access? No. No, it oh, came okay. out in like 2018 or something. Oh, it's got wow. like yeah. okay. four expansions or something. Yeah. Oh, jeez. It just had oh, a, wow. a recent expansion. Okay. Okay. It's a really good game, but my God. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> You're really selling it. It's it, selling it, really, it, well. it, it really does its best to put you off right at the start. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like it. <laughs> so far, it's put me off before I've even started. Well, I'm on my fifth playthrough. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, because I the first four tries, I couldn't figure oh, out what the okay. fuck to do. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. I thought you meant like you've beaten it four times. No, right, I mean, I so literally much. started over wow. four other times before I found a post on the internet that said to start at this start oh. if you want to learn how to play the game. Wow. Like, even something simple, right? Because you're like, oh, what do you do? Like, you see, like, oh, you just fly around and do some basic missions, right? Yep. Even how do you, how do I find missions? Have to You have to Google it. Oh, yeah, and I had that wrong for, like, quite a while until I talked to you in the rec room. Oh, my God. <laughs> it... <laughs> it... Have a listen. Let's, 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 have a, let's talk about this on the podcast.